And welcome back. This should be episode 10, but I think it still is episode 10, but we might call it episode 11. Anyway, welcome to the Bottomless Podcast. If you are a return listener, welcome back. And we are so glad to have you. If you are a first time listener, we hope you stick around. Uh, So to get right into it, my name is Kevin. Kevin. The other Kevin, Kevin, and the other two people are... Vincent and Leslie. <laughs> and Leslie, <laughs> I'm from Kevin is from Florida. Vince is from Los Angeles. Leslie is along those islands with volcanoes on them that everyone wants to live in where they film Lilo Not and Stitch. Also, I'm from California, but I'm reporting live from Frozen Tundra of North Carolina. You're it's 34 degrees. Right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So also, can little... we, like, make a podcast ritual where every season we skip episode 10? Like, that's our tradition. Yeah. You know? It's like floor oh 13. Gosh. I really love that, and it's a tradition. Also, yeah. I love how you're bellowing. You were the one who said you were going to have to be quiet because you're outside of your house. <laughs> I was ready for our sleepy vibes, and you're, like, bellowing. <laughs> Wait, Kevin, say something real quick. Check, check, one, two. Check, Kevin, one. Say, say something. Say something, I'm, I'm giving, giving up, up on you. you. Say something. Say something. What's the next lyric? <laughs> so, your guess is as good as mine. Sorry, the bike of the Which means that in a song from a songwriting aspect, they did a horrible job. So they did not write as good as we did when we said if why fit in when you were bored to stand out. Nice. It's iffy if you were going to make it to the end there for a second. I was too, honestly, but you know what? Look at God. So speaking of standing out and not fitting in, <laughs> Vince is doing a standout from social media. He's doing a sit-out. He's doing a, a sit-in and a counter-cultural movement. Are you Ew, sitting in sounds, on yourself? Are you protesting that sounds, yourself? I, that sounds disgusting, um, but I am taking a social media break, um, which, to be honest, I've definitely have broken already in the first week, but I'm not mad at it. I feel like I've already, so basically, I just wanted to take some time off from the rest of the year, cut out a lot of the noise that I felt like was swirling in my head at all times in general, and social media definitely exacerbated that. Um so I definitely feel like I've cut the noise out. And also I feel like I've all already switched mentally from like a compulsive use to an intentional use. So I did cheat. Uh, like we post for this podcast or Leslie did an interview. Check her out on Instagram. Um, um, but I didn't really feel bad about it. It just feels different when you're intentional about like what you're consuming, um, which, which is nice. And I also wasn't on social media for a year, I think 2018. So it's not as hard maybe for some other people as it might be um for me but yeah and kevin expert because you took one year off in 2018 so it's probably yeah, no, hard for you <laughs> sorry no big deal uh for you scrubs um no i i think it's it i mean it's healthy it's like any compulsive thing that you do i feel like we should all take breaks but kevin i'm not the only pretentious one also i don't like talking about it because it just sounds annoying when we were in high school i feel like that was like the cool thing to do was to take a social media break but to be fair kevin's also a hipster because he's taking a social media break right now too uh, well before we uh, vince like what yeah, what is it is it because you didn't really say what's the motivation like what what provoked you what has provoked you when you did it for a year like what's the reason Oh, that was just bad mental health. <laughs> so that was a lot less of a pleasant break than this one. I mean, this one is for my mental health, but in a proactive sense and wanting to spend time at the end of the year. I have like a lot of just more, um, less uh, empty carbs consumption things that I want to spend my time and attention on for the rest of the year. Catching up on reading books. 
I actually read a newspaper uh, digitally, but in, as opposed to reading like Twitter headlines. So that that's my intention this time. The year I took off was more of um, me trying to not, I don't know, have an anxiety attack every time I open up my phone. So that was a bit of a different... <laughs> <laughs> different we circumstances a progress king <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what about you why did you take a break from social but sans twitter he's still wilding on twitter so i hear similar similar now my causes were different like if i say mental health because of instagram um or mental health because of external reasons it was different but for me it was similar in terms of like how can I explain this without saying <laughs> without saying too much and without Leslie having to put it in the cut notes? I I took a break from social media, much like Vince, because I noticed a a dysfunctional pattern of overusage, of compulsive usage, and negative consequences linked directly to every time I would you know, like open the app and not find what I was looking for. So I was what like, were you looking for? So I, so, in, so I was like, Hey, I can ignoring Vince's question. I can, I can cut, I can, I can cut the legs out from under this issue by deleting the app. Like I have, I realized after I, like the days after I deleted it, I have a natural muscle both of you can probably relate to this when i was in fadeville i was driving back to jojo's house with jojo and we were on all american and one of the exits from all american is a way to my house that i would drive every day home from work when i was driving back to jojo's house i naturally started turning into the lane the exit to go to my house and jojo was like yo yo what are you doing and it was it was just muscle memory that if i go into autopilot i will naturally just go to like there's neural pathways in our mind that we naturally flow down i have a neural pathway in my mind where i can mindlessly pull my screen down to pull the search engine up on my phone and i naturally type in i n and then click the instagram app so even after i deleted Ooh, it, i've done that the first few days i did that at least once an hour i swear to god i would i turned it off the search results so it wouldn't pop up thank god but it's so compulsive to just tw i n that's, Wait, there's so, a search you're saying where you search all the apps that are downloaded on your phone you guys don't just have it like on a certain screen that you swipe to so with me i hid it under under a folder behind oh. like where you can't see it <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> so it literally me hiding it came from several several uh, several months ago maybe a couple years ago where, when vince did his hiatus for a year i did a similar hiatus so when i brought it back instead of having it on my main screen, I put it in a folder and you have to slide like two pages down to find it in the, so later you have to go dig for it. Um, but now I deleted, deleted it. And I deleted it. So it, like Vince is saying the first few days, my muscle memory of just me grabbing mm-hmm. my phone mm-hmm. mindlessly, I would pull down type I N. So literally because of our podcast, like e- even when it's my turn to post videos, I'm making it to where I have to forcibly download it for that little bit post the videos and then re-delete it because I just refuse to like so um yeah I did it for mental I did I was saying free for mental health deterioration like I was falling down a bad a bad cycle um I wasn't in a good space it was bringing bad energy in and sometimes I'm okay with just being a byproduct of my energy and where it, where it takes me and like my mind my thoughts down trails of thinking throughout a, a day or a week or a month sometimes I don't mind it but because it felt so ex- this specific instance felt so exhausting i was like i'm not putting up with this i need to take back control a little bit of the steering wheel and the way i can do that is by clearing my f- instagram out and then deleting that bitch off my phone so uh, hasta la bye bye mm. vince with you was it ex- mental health to linked to the app or externally with life work family personal um, I mean, it was anchored externally, but just social media sometimes can exacerbate it, um, especially if it's mental health as it relates, especially like anxiety type mental health, where a lot of it is triggered or at least just in the realm of uh, relationships and like how you relate to people. So social media was a big part of that. But maybe we can get deeper in that in a future episode about social media. But real quick, I'm curious if you don't know. Leslie is the OG of um, being above and beyond our petty mm. plebeian oh. usage of mm. social media. Mm. Um, 
So I'm curious, since you have started to get more online, do you feel a need to take a break or do you feel like you have a pretty healthy relationship with social media? Interesting question. I kind of was pondering on that since both of you guys are taking a break right now. You know, it obviously made me think about it. And what Vincent is referring to is just that I have gone on some long social media hiatuses, like a couple years, both times. Um, Once at the end of high school and then once, I think like maybe two or three years ago, I was off for maybe like a year and a half, two years. Um, And so I did a lot of thinking about it back then. Um, and now, but, but the thing is, I feel like even before I went on my breaks, I had never really like given it a shot for what it could be. You know what I mean? Like even then I was just always like kind of side-eyeing it while participating. So I feel like if anything, now I'm more like kind of looking at head on and like appreciating the things about it that are really good. Um, and I definitely feel like the negative effects, but for some reason during COVID, like for me personally and where I'm at, all the positives have way outweighed the negatives. Um, I do want to be more careful about like <clears throat> not being on right before I go to bed just because of like the blue light. So I'm like thinking about that kind of thing and I'm horrible at that, you know, cause just so often it's easier, like, especially like, you know, talking about how a lot of social media isn't just like consuming content, but it very, it's like a real part of relationships for me. Lots of times if I'm having like an overwhelming day with other things going on, whether that's work or other stuff. I like waiting till I'm like done with everything and then like opening messages and then like, you know, being able to actually reply from a space of like myself and not like, you know, whatever's going on. Um, But yeah, so no, like, I mean, I'm sure it will circle back there. I'm sure there'll be a time coming up again where I'm like, yep, it's time to like, you know, disconnect for now though. I'm just like enjoying riding the positive waves. Fuck with that. Yeah. Also, one thing I will say, you guys probably remember this, like when Dave Chappelle quit his skit comedy show on Comedy Central, like over a decade and a half ago, and then like went, oh, well, Leslie, here's a little, here's a little like fun fact. A long time ago, he used to have the show, he quit it, like randomly one day went like literally flew to Africa and like the company got pissed because they weren't that wasn't the agreement. He they were like, he spoke, you know, like the way old media used to be to try to like, um, uh what is what's that word when you ruin someone's character like publicly defamation like, defamation slander. like slander and defamation defamation the character he smoked crack and he's crazy he's difficult yada 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 and then he disappeared for a year uh, for a decade almost almost two decades like a decade and a half and then came back and is is arguably the most successful comic or the most skilled comic today mm-hmm. in this climate and so um i when i I can't, I can't I can't necessarily explain the exact feeling that resonates but when I his most recent special was about publicly flogging HBO for using the Chappelle show because when he initially pitched the Chappelle show to them they literally said to him what do we need you for we have Chris Rock and the joke used to be back in the day Ew. the joke used to be back in the day that as long as you have your key token blackie, you don't need, you only need, there's only space for one black person in an industry. So I mean, that's why you guys keep, that's why you guys keep me on this podcast. Let's be clear. Uh, (laughs) But also it's just, that is even more like ridiculous that they said that because their vibes could not be more different. Like their vibes are so like, yeah. No, 1000. So he, when I, when I watched that special, and every time I watch any of his recent material for the past, like maybe half decade, decade, <clears throat> I always get this vibe of like, he feels like a sage. He feels like a monk. Like I think of those, like, t- like those monks in China who like, or like any, anyone, Amer- like there's people who do this in Northern America who live on reservations, who live on these isolated like places on, pro- on large properties of land and they disconnect from social they disconnect from anything civilization they just have their little plot of land and maybe they like have people who run gr- bring resources and food but when i see dave i think of people like that who he's not really present on social media he only recently got an instagram to share stuff in a more um direct to consumer way with his audience and as as an artist and as a poet i've always wanted to experiment I, I, something in me sees dave and goes i want to try that I want to disconnect for a decade 
from the internet or from as much as I can from social media and see what happens to my art and see if I can come back with a higher caliber of art just for the sake of the experiment. So part of it was mental health, but I'll, right now I'm, run, I'm trying to run a social experiment on myself to see how long can I do this? And can I come back? Can I look back 10 years from now and have better art than I did when I was using it? Um, Cause then I get to, then I get to have a discussion with myself of like, Hey, if the art is better and now it's 10 years, so you've gotten used to being without it, then you can use it as a tool if you want, but now you can live without it. So how about let's just continue to live without it. So it's a little bit of mental health, but also it's a little bit of like something I can't put my finger on looks at people like Dave Chappelle and goes, man, living like outside the ether, like the atmosphere of the, of the, interconnected web just feels like it's beckoning me so it's kind of a little bit of an experiment i'm running on myself right now okay i'm looking forward to when we do a full-length episode on it i think it will be rich and meaty and juicy because yeah there's like so much there's just so much you can get into with and just to clarify my answer like i still have the same strong critique of it and the way that we relate to it that I did back when I took mine. But just for me personally right now, I'm like, you know, that that's where I'm at with like the positives outweighing the negatives. That's real. Yeah. Also, doesn't Dave Chappelle's vibe remind you guys of Lakeith Stanfield's vibe? If you know who that is. Lakeith, A little Stan, bit. Lakeith Stanfield? I yeah, don't. he you're was gonna, in... You're going to need to, mm-hmm. you're gonna need to do a quick... He's the guy quick... in Get Out and Sorry to Bother You. He's Darius in Atlanta. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, I love that guy I so much. I love him yeah, he, so much. Yeah, he's a young Dave for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. No, you're, he's, he's, like, he's, like, he's like a young black renaissance art kind of. Yeah, you're right. He has, that, he has that aura and that vibe about him. Yeah. True. And I will say the one cool thing about social media hiatus is is I ain't got to see everybody doing their like obligatory holiday posts on Instagram that like What's an clear... obligatory holiday post? She said I'm a little sad because she had been drafting one. Oh, <laughs> like oh, awk. No, I'm just kind of kidding. <laughs> so like like pick like if you go to see a um like people when they do like uh like Fayetteville Fay or North Carolina does like light fest not light festivals but they have a bunch of like Christmas lights you can go somewhere drive an hour away and go like oh, get on yeah. a trolley and um or like if you went pumpkin <clears throat> picking or to a pumpkin patch on Halloween or like your obligatory Thanksgiving plate post um it's like it's just uh, it's, yeah it's, it's I, like, I don't want to see your dry turkey that it's like mm, you shouldn't have put never mind let me not fair, fair, like the, the t- <laughs> no po- post your food <laughs> yeah it's the time the timeline is flooded and it's just it's it, it's it's even beyond even beyond the most wonderful time of the year like mother's day actually what i will say the one thing i'm gonna miss if i stay out forever 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 ever is mother's day posts because mothers mothers are a crystal ball into what a girl's gonna look like in 20 years so i've been using them <laughs> I'll be using the Mother's Day post. <laughs> Leslie, Leslie, empathy, empathy, Leslie. Um, you do have a really point. Empathy, but I feel like it keeps getting misused. <laughs> Wait, what does empathy? We, the idea. <laughs> oh no, I, I yeah, I, def, I definitely say empathy, and what I actually mean is just give me permission to be inappropriate. Um, so speaking of holidays, outside of social media, um, I had this interesting thought that was provoked by someone else who was like, why the fuck do we do weddings? And I was like, stupid, what are you talking about? He was like, no, 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 for real, think about the idea. Like, think about all the ceremonial shit, but think, why do we, why do we do weddings? Why do we do funerals? They're all, and he, he was, he, he literally doesn't, he doesn't go to those and he doesn't, he, he doesn't like them. He's very bothered by them. And I think for him, the issue was he doesn't like to stand on ceremony. So at a wedding, it's like dress up and you're supposed to act a certain way. And it's it's like, are you him? No, no, no. This is uh, the guy saying. I, I say that because you, you, you're not. You don't like to stand on ceremony either. This is true. Um, yeah. So the the friend he like doesn't like to stand on ceremony. Doesn't like uh, acting. You know, like the social, the unspoken social contracts. If you're at a funeral, you're supposed to be solemn, quiet, somber. Even if you're not actually sad, pretend like you're sad. At weddings, you know, everyone's. I mean, weddings a little more natural to just be get a little drunk and you can be happy, even if you don't know the couple. So he was making me 
like questioning me, like think of like graduation, like he's and then he this is where it really fucked me up. I still feel like this is just you talking to yourself. I, I don't believe that there's <laughs> other <laughs> what All right, I'll, I'll, What fucked me up was he was like, and this is what really sent me on the rabbit trail. Are you guys ready? He was like, Do you know that graduation ceremonies are like oh. pad are they're 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 a ritual pattern after like after like um like pagan ceremonies like the, the the hat is symbolic of something the robe is symbolic of something and it fucked me up and he was like but no one ever questions that no one ever goes to gra- no parent no child goes to a graduation ceremony sees a square cap and goes why is it square sees a, a robe and go why are they in robes mm. no one ever goes to a wedding and goes why does she have a garter on no one goes to a funeral and goes like what so no one ever questioned the different elements that contribute to a festival or tradition he's like we just do these things birthdays like can't he's like we just do all of these things and no one ever steps back and goes why are we doing this what is this symbolic of i am and and and, and to slow down a little bit and to, to just give you what level of genius this person is and I'm, I'm afraid because I'm afraid that anyone who, who just doesn't think doesn't think this considerably about things may hear what I'm about to say and go oh it's just stupid anyone that thinks that should have given that up listening to this podcast we spent a whole lot like <laughs> <true>. we <laughs> He, uh, Next week, our theme is going to be like a freaking rock or something. It's going to be like a three-hour-long episode. <laughs> yeah, he's in two. I'm writing that down. I like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's a biology major, and he was like, whatever environment you're in, the bacteria in that environment enters and like by by multiple pathways can get like so when you stay at a hotel, when you have roommates, when you like. You stay in environments where there's other people. You literally, through multiple entryways into your body, whether skin, the organ of your skin, the organ of your mouth, the organ of bacteria, that bacteria from that environment can enter into your body. And wherever you live at normally is, is the, the back, your bacteria in your own home, your own space enters into your body. But when you get into a new environment, a novel environment, that bacteria will get into your body. He literally was so thoughtful about those kind of things that when we were in, when we were in dormitories where we had roommates, he wouldn't leave his shower belongings in the shower because he because because he was like i don't want he was like no, i don't he's like <clears throat> i'm so sorry sorry can you just start that sentence over i couldn't not giggle i don't know if you guys saw i just put in the chat but I, I just saw that's what i was laughing at <laughs> I, think I think it's because your mic is up so loud. Sorry, it's just I can hear Vince breathing, so I wanted to make not you. <laughs> so all that to say, um, he 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 literally would go so far as to like when in, in being thoughtful about things that he participates in because he understands the participation in things is contributing to your becoming as a person. So not just in ceremony and ritual, but so far as to say that if I live in a roommate with somebody that I don't like, he would go so far as to remove, not leave his bathroom items in the shower because he understood my shower cloth could be in that bathroom where his, where his bacteria is going to be. And it can enter into my, like that, that, that so thought. And he, and mind you, this is one of the, like, in terms of like fitness, he got me into fitness when I was like dying. I got you into fitness, but go ahead. He he um he just he just changed my life in so many ways. He's he's probably like top five most influential people in my life, famous or not famous. So when he said that thing about graduations, it blew my mind because I used to work at a college and I was the person who had to put on when I was there for the last two or three years, I was the person who was the coordinator for the graduation. I would like run all the graduates through rehearsals. I would I would print I would print the diplomas. I was like order the order the caps and gowns, order the tassels. Like I was the event planner for the graduation. So it really stuck out in my mind of like I never thought about this. I I used to put my hand on so many different elements of this traditional ceremony that we I've seen. I've done it. I've been to it for college for high school. I I've, I've sat through several of them for colleges. I've been to friends. I've been to other you know. And I never thought about it. What the fuck does this tassel mean? What the fuck does this cap mean? What the fuck does this cap and gown mean? Even with women, like sitting at a wedding and seeing a garter thing that where they where the men pulls the garter off. Like I had to go look that up because I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? Why are we doing this? You just sit through this like ritualistic shit and you don't question it. And he was right. It was like, we just mindlessly sit through all these things. So uh, it just set me on a journey. And I thought this was a cool idea because a couple episodes ago, we talked about, Leslie mentioned the idea of like, 
Korean New Year's and these traditional things that Koreans do with their families of bowing and your and your elders blessing you and giving you money, and how there's like festivals in the Korean calendar, like you would eat some kind of same, same time around Thanksgiving. We're talking about Thanksgiving dinner um, or Lunar New Year, and like literally my like Leslie has food that she's showing on the camera. Literally, my mom. I would. I remember growing up, and I would ask my mother, and this is where I'll stop, and then throw it to you guys to kind of give your take growing up on our different holidays in America as compared to maybe things you know about other countries' holidays. I remember I would ask my mom how old she was when I was younger, and she would go, well, it depends on if you're asking me on how Americans measure their birthdays or how Koreans do. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, I forgot exactly how she described it, but because of their new year, it, it falls differently, I think. Leslie, you can help mm-hmm. me here. What, what, is, because- what is the exact... It's because in Korea, they, you're one when you're born because they treat the time that you're developing in the womb as like part of your, like you, you're basically one. They count the nine months as one year. That. So as a young kid, I remember thinking to myself, like that's, it, it, was, it was novel. It was, it was different. It, I never heard anyone say that. My mom said that. She said it's just so cavalier, like it was casual. Okay, this might be a spicy digression, but what is that? What are the implications for abortion in that case? Just curious, quickly Ooh. curious. You can't just Ooh. quickly ask that. <laughs> I know, but that's just so interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, if <laughs> all right, maybe maybe we won't go there. I don't want to trigger anyone that's listening. Let me, let me find out Vince back in favor for two weeks, and he he turned it back into a conservative Republican. Let me find <laughs> out. Let I, me. Don't bait me into giving my opinion holla, on these things <laughs> in a public platform. You baited yourself. You literally just brought it up. <laughs> I'm, Nobody... I'm just, I'm just not anyone specific. Just culturally, like, is it a similar like conversation as here? Because it's a good question. I actually don't yeah. know. I mean, I feel like there's a. I feel like a lot of Koreans are Christian, but that's like not backed by anything other than like my experiences. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just interesting. That's a good point. I never thought about that either. Because yeah, Les- Leslie's right. I've only had the context of the only cultural Christian that I know that I've had extensive conversation with is my mother, and she's Christian, so it's like not helpful to be like, oh, oh no, like you, yeah, you you represent like the the thought process of all Koreans. Let me ask <laughs> you what you think on abortion. You're a Christian, of course. I know what you think about abortion. Well, it also makes me wonder, like, is Korea the only country that does birthdays like that? I don't actually know. Like, if it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sound I've off never, in the comments if you yeah. have any cultural heritage that honors yeah. birthdays in a similar way. Yeah, for real. I've for never it. met anybody from any other culture who's like, oh, well, which, which one do you mean? But like, usually, especially from like older generation Koreans, they'll always be like, well, which one do you mean? Or they'll say, like, oh, well, you know, my Korean age is this, my American age is this. Yeah. But like, nobody, you know what I mean? Like, I've never met anybody else who was like, well, yeah. So yeah. maybe we're unique in that way. I don't know. So for you guys, do you guys know what the symbology is behind the garter part of a wedding? When the man pulls the garter off the bride's leg with his teeth. Okay, were we not supposed to look this stuff up? I feel like what it 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 it, it is what it kind of implies, or at least in my experience, it's like a whole ceremony where homeboy like gets down on all like on his knees and like works his way up and like bites it off <laughs> am i wrong so i feel like you know it, it, it's it's there it's out on the is. floor yeah but I, I, life, I, life is art it's, 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 uh, amen oh. um <laughs> we have a Vincent noise you guys now it's my goal to get that noise again at some point <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, but I've, it's like the idea of like deflowering. Um, Wait. So to uh, clarify, you did Google this, or you prepped as in like you just already thought about it, or you're well, saying that was my impression? But like I Googled to confirm. Like I can't give you Aww. necessarily the history of it, but I feel like that's like the the symbol, the symbolism behind it, uh, which makes sense, right? Like you're the man taking the garter and then there's also like you throw it uh is it garter or garner isn't it garner garter g-a-r-t-e-r yeah garter and then you throw it to the 
the homeboys, whoever catches it, is like likely next to get married. Apparently, sometimes he'll put it on the the bridesmaid that caught the flower bouquet. Um, oh. So if you're single, maybe you just need to slide your way into a. Um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Was that your impression, Leslie, or did you have a much more um, wholesome view? No, I kind of thought the same thing. Mine's, if anything, just a little more like right to the point like i i guess i would have thought it had to do with like well yeah you kind of you said deflowering so everything that would come with that like i thought it had to do with the hymen tbh mm. <laughs> i was like well especially thinking about if it's been happening for a while i just feel like more of our traditions that started a while ago had more like that type of straightforward route that now we would be a little bit like ooh, like you know like i don't know um I don't, I've never liked it. I just always thought it was kind of weird. It's, it's Especially weird with like your parents there. Like what if your dad catches it and you throw it out into the audience? Like what is that supposed to mean? It's, it's supposed I to be single. Well, your dad could be single. thinks about that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vince has a point because I was going to say it's supposed to be for single men, but if your dad's divorced and he's single, then technically. Um, so Vince is right. That, that That's one of the uh, symbologies behind it. The other symbology <clears throat> that I learned, and this sounds like some ye olde English bullshit, but it, 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 it makes sense. It used to be tradition that the garments the bride wore were good luck. So mm -hmm. the story, the folklore, was that men in the wedding would literally like rip the bride's dress into pieces off of her to try to get a, a, pe a token of good luck. It's so and violent. So, and so... <laughs> what? I just see, like, like piece by piece, that poor woman. They would, they, would, they would rush. They would blitz the woman. They would blitz the woman, rip the wedding dress off of her. And so to prevent oh, that, God. they would do the garter thing. Oh, and that's why... That's why you throw the garter to the men. It's supposed to be a token of good luck. Like the, you know, like think about that. Like, wait a second. What do you mean they? So the dude and all of his like groomsmen would all rush, or just the groom, or just the groom? <laughs> apparently, apparently it would be like before the garter thing. Apparently it would be like I guess all maybe all parties, but I think all men is the, is the indication. All men in the wedding, which I mean, amen, brothers, do what you got to do. I'm it sounds disgusted. so traumatic. I am so disgusted. <sighs> ten out of ten recommend. <laughs> 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, uh, joking. Um, man, there was something else I was going to make a point of. Garters, wedding, that. So, yeah, that was the idea. So, to prevent that, to kind of, kind of. Uh, to appease. To, to appease that, it was like, all right, let's do this garter thing. So, I'm not sure how true that is, but it was the folklore and the, and the mythology attached with the garter story. Um, and then On even the with. No, go ahead. On the no on the note of, <laughs> I feel like I've done that before on the pod. On pod, I don't think I've heard it. <laughs> um, well, like another wedding relating one is rings, and I'm thinking more like engagement rings. I don't know. Do you guys ever hear the story of why engagement rings are so such a big deal? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And this I had heard before. I didn't cheat, um, but like it's as. I mean, I guess everything is. It's like completely manufactured. The idea of like getting a really nice engagement ring and that I think during the Great Depression, um, obviously people had some other things to worry about buying, like, I don't know, food, shelter. Um, so diamonds weren't really selling and like the market was getting crashed. So it was a completely intentional marketing ploy to manufacture really? an engagement ring um, just so they could sell more diamonds. There's like, there's, it's not like folklore. It's literally um pr and it just kind of stuck it, it didn't happen before the great depression i'm sure you could give people like rings uh yeah. which was like contractual but like diamond engagement rings no wow. that was not a thing that's so interesting oh that's hilarious i ain't buying my future wife and dog shit <laughs> what about Leslie, the veil how do you feel about that so that's that's a thing the veil was supposed to be symbolic of, and I, this I heard from the comedy show that I was watching. The veil was supposed to be symbolic because the woman went through each of the elements. The veil was supposed to be symbolic of it's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding. And so veils used to be very like, like you're supposed to cover her and you're not supposed to see her until the moment that it's actually like at the altar. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to cover her face and her sanctity and her like, you don't get to see her. And 
Mm-hmm. Dress up like a Dementor from Harry Potter. And then r- don't see her until the wedding. And then once you do, <laughs> boys, come on, let's rip her dress off. <laughs> and in order to appease you, I'll, I'll give you a garter that was like near her area where I will deflower her just to appease you since you can no longer rip her dress off. <laughs> So let's, let's, sounds, let's run. Sounds like women made up all of these symbols, to be honest. Oh, yeah. True. It's what we want. Uh, um, so, I, I, and, and so the greater conversation that I think initially provoked this one was, we, Leslie, I talked about how I had one gone to my Korean grandparents' house for Thanksgiving, and they did this kind of um, food thing that wasn't Thanksgiving, but it was on the day before Thanksgiving. And then Vince kind of mentioned... Like, man, why don't we have stuff like that in, in America? That's what it made me think about, like, what, all the Stuff hol- like that, as in, like, holidays and traditions and ceremonies tied more to, like, maybe, like, the changing of the seasons or food. Yes. Rather than just, like, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. Rather than, like, a industry's PR campaign, yes. Because mm-hmm. even, even, the, even the two that we have that I think are attached to seasonal things, which would be, um, or changing of seasons, which is Halloween, changing of harvest, which we stole from from as best as i can understand mexicans and then christmas which 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 was some sort of pagan holiday and 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 even the conceptual idea of when it's the darkest time of the year based on how much sunlight is happening at that time of year we then light a tree up so we can have light in the dark so even these ritualistic things are taken from some other element or some other culture i think um so i begin to think about it and go yeah so vince provoked a question that i i i the purpose, I think, uh, the ultimate purpose of this episode that, that we can just have fun and talk and bounce off and talk about different holidays and shit. But the ultimate purpose was to... Are we reaching the purpose 40 minutes in? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The purpose... Nice. The, purpose, purpose. Classic. <laughs> the, 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 purpose the purpose was to be, was to provoke thought about, like, pause and then thoughtfulness and p- being present in the moment about, especially this time of year, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm-hmm. New Year's. Thoughtfulness about the ritualistic things of life that we kind of just flow through, whether it be New Year's or birthdays or anniversaries or Thanksgiving, to be more thoughtful and go like, yeah, these are cool. I'm not trying to say like they're bad or graduation ceremonies. I'm not trying to say they're bad. It's just has, has have we ever as a culture sat back and thought about them? And then even how they were, like Vince said with engagement rings, how they were engineered and how they're so different from other cultures like China or Korea and, and what they may do differently and why they – why theirs came about. Theirs came about because like, man, there's a long tradition and history attached to like the crops and the harvest or yeah, seasonal changes. Whereas with us, it's like, man, capitalism, like I, we need to sell diamonds and it, like it's, it's, it's hard out here for a pimp. So we got to get these fucking diamonds moved out the, out the store, tell these motherfuckers they need to buy their wives um, engagement rings. Um, but like, ha, ha, and, and I'll say this and I'll ask you guys, when I was young, I told myself that I wanted to build a tradition for my kids where we'll still celebrate Christmas. Like maybe I'll like, you know, gifts, but I want to build into this time of year, a a family tradition where we go and give to somebody else. We serve somebody else. We give, we consciously think about someone else who isn't able to repay us. Someone we're not related to someone. We don't know someone who can't con who isn't able to pay us back. So for you guys, the question is like have you guys like have you guys ever consciously stepped back during a holiday and gone like what's the symbology and then am i even okay with it and if you weren't okay with it have you ever thought of like is this something i really want to continue to participate in when i have a family or if you are okay with it have you even just sat back and said i want like i wonder and i want to figure out what these things mean like whether it's american holidays or foreign holidays or foreign traditions um, have the, has has any holiday tradition, ceremony, festival, ritual, been a cause for pause in your life um, to figure out what it's about and the and the meaning behind it and the history behind it and the path that led down. I'm just shooting blanks over here. I was hoping Vincent was gonna <laughs> was gonna swoop in. Vince, Although I did bit- like I did like cause for pause, and I was kind of thinking that should be the name of this episode. <laughs> for example, cause Leslie for thinks pause. Leslie thinks Vince that like, you know, Leslie wants to know Vince, how do you feel about uh, Black History Month being on the shortest shortest month of the year? What? Um, when did I say I wanted to know? That? I did hear that. I did hear that. Leslie wanted to know that. Um, holla, oh holla at uh, your brother, Vince. 
Yeah, I'll take you guys on a long journey, so please pop in and out. But I do think there's always been thoughts about holidays, but what what that discussion has changed a lot since growing up. So, like, growing up, I feel like as Christians, we can all relate. And I'm back in North Carolina, so home sweet home for this. This is perfect. Um, There was a lot of considerations about holidays, but it was more of, like, considering the ways in which, like, we've, quote, unquote, lost our way. Like, Christmas, Mm. like, taking the Christ out of Christmas and, like... um, try not to get possessed on halloween so i feel like i've thought about holidays and like the weird symbolism and like even the weird consumer culture about it just from a different lens uh but i do realize i feel like when i became a teenager i don't know if you guys noticed this but it became a lot more of a conversation of like oh these quote-unquote christian holidays or really just appropriations of pagan holidays um and like also can we define pagan can you define pagan? Ooh, I was actually going there. Uh, that's Ooh, that's nice. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like that was the kind of conversation at, when, once we became like a teenager. I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. But was it the same with y'all? Like around teenager, you started being like, oh, like this isn't actually Christian. This is like a appropriation of like pagan holidays. Um, I think now that my worldview has shifted and even doing a little bit of reading for this uh episode my first question was and let's see i mean you just asked it like is there a binary of like a pagan holiday and like theistic holiday i i, I feel like now um like halloween for example is such a complex i was trying to research the actual origin it's such a complicated story that we don't really know so like it's not really based in like mexican indigenous culture any more so than it's based in like irish culture but it's like a synthesis Mm. of centuries of different rituals that yes the church came in and like eventually uh tried to appropriate to an extent but also did they appropriate is it more just like a synthesis of cultures and i feel like that understanding of holidays in america doesn't exist but my impression is that in other countries like older countries maybe there is the sense of like oh this is maybe not how the holidays always been celebrated but there's such a steep history of different festivals and rituals that have evolved but i don't know does that make sense or does does that shift make sense because i feel like that's something that just literally crystallized reading for this episode of like oh this wasn't like Mm. based in one thing this is just like a synthesis of culture and time well I think that where my mind goes on it relates to what you're saying, but like, it's like a different color, but they're at a similar, they kind of point to a similar thing where I think of holidays. Well, first off, I did grow up having a few like holidays that weren't part of the the American canon of holidays. Cause like when we lived in Germany, we celebrated, I think it's called St. Nicholas Day. And basically you put your shoes outside of your door and like St. Nicholas comes and, and gives you like a clementine and like nuts and stuff like that. Uh, and it was like really fun. It's before Christmas. And then um, we often didn't like formally celebrate Chuseok, which is the Korean harvest holiday Kevin was referencing. It's a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, but like there's awareness and sometimes we do a, a little something. Sometimes we do a little something for like Korean New Year. Um, with like special rice cake soup that you make for that. <clears throat> so all that to say that I feel like when I think of holidays, it's also actually similar to how I think of like like weddings, which I actually think are really fun. Um, and I don't have like bad feelings about them at all. And like um, also social media, kind of what I was mentioning, how like I'm enjoying the good parts of it, where how I see them is like they're all kind of, humanity participating in like the joy of performance or like the joy of like the idea of masking is probably a a good way to say it like you see like in so many cultures throughout history um you know like like body paint like chain like extreme like hairstyles or literal masks or costuming and then I just feel like we continually evolve like iterations of that idea of like and you I I just feel like celebrations and traditions and like holidays so like are us participating in something about humans and I think a lot of animals I always get this picture in my head of like those birds I don't remember the name but there's like a certain type of bird that like does this really elaborate like mating dance 
basically equivalent of what Vincent was saying with a little tr like ceremony to get the garter off, you know, like, uh, not really, but kind of, you know, where it's like, I don't know. It's like, I think probably for humans, it's maybe a little more like self-aware than it is for other animals. Like, but I don't know. I mean, I can't say I'm not, I'm not that bird, but like, yeah. And I think it's also an, an opportunity for us to participate in like storytelling about ourselves without calling mm. it that. Like we love telling stories about ourselves and we, as, as like a, as humanity and then individually. And I think that holidays and anything that's repeated is we like it so much probably partly because outside of like definite markers of repetition in our lives like the sun goes up the sun comes down you know the seasons change like holidays are things like we chose and like we've decided and we've refined and we've created iteration after iteration and i think that there's just something it's both like on a such a basic level fun you know but I think there's probably something deeper where it's like we've chosen that these are the things we repeat and like we interrupt the chaos of daily life that are all the things we can't control by like, you know, we've decided. So here's my here's well, unless unless Vince has something, he looks like he's pondering. <laughs> here's my next question. In the realm of you two having kids in the next, somewhere in the next 10 years. Next there, nine months. <laughs> and they'll be one. What's her name? Um, is there any holiday that, that or like tradition, uh, uh, Tooth Fairy, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, is there any tradition or holiday that, you, that you've thought about and, and went man like i'm just gonna tell my kids straight up there ain't no santa claus there ain't no tooth fairy there ain't no easter bunny like or there's there any holiday where you're like i'm just gonna tell my kids straight up from the beginning like this is what it is or are I you gonna let I, your kids are you gonna let your kids live in the lie that you build around their lives well when it comes crumbling down you got to explain to them that daddy and mommy were filthy liars not a leading uh, question at all <laughs> i am a filthy i'm a filthy liar but i do think i'll let my kids believe that stuff but probably cut it way sooner than like cut it pretty soon like it's i don't i don't see the harm in like literally toddlers believing in the tooth fairy because they what also age what age Ooh, i don't know i would need to think about like I, I honestly i'm pretty not fluent in childhood development i can even tell you when kids are not to speak so um but you no know, you don't want little vincent being the stupid one who's 10 years old who's like yeah, yeah santa claus and his classmates are like oh this dumb motherfucker <laughs> But you also don't want him being the jackass in first grade. It ruins it for everyone. Do you know Santa Claus isn't real? I <sighs> might, I might accidentally make him that that kid that ruins it for everyone. I don't know. But I on your question of like holidays that I'll celebrate with my kids, um, similar to you, I, I was thinking through like we like all these all the symbolism and like these weird rituals like. A, a rabbit for easter or um like santa claus like those things are cool and all but i feel like my best memories about holidays growing up are just rooted in community and i feel like even if i don't necessarily believe in the religious aspect of christmas or like the consumer aspect of christmas like creating a holiday for my kids that's rooted in like spending time with family as well as like the greater community um like I think we've all like fed the homeless on Thanksgiving or Christmas, like that kind of stuff, which is, which is cool in itself, but even more so like, what about feeding the unhoused people that are literally in my neighborhood or like my neighbor, like that, that sense of community, I feel like is a, a lot of what I remember growing up as a kid enjoying about holidays that I don't really get to enjoy anymore. And I feel like that piece of it, I definitely want to create something for my kids to, to look forward to with that kind of feel, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think for me, and then, Kevin, did you give your answer? Nah, 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 I'm waiting for y'all Okay, too. Okay, okay, so you have me. For me, I definitely don't plan to make my holidays for my kids, like, opportunities to learn morals. I want them to learn those things, like, all throughout life, and it not at all feel like, oh, it's Thanksgiving, like, this is the time of year that we do this, or it's Christmas, this is the time we, like, stuff mm -hmm. a shoebox for kids, like, I like don't plan to do that at all because even if I don't know it's just like I think 
it's like well intentioned, but it it just sets up it it. it perpetuate such a harmful cycle of like relegating good deeds to like mm. because that's what everyone's doing at a certain time and as if like there's only people who who need each other to treat each other like community at certain times of the year mm-hmm. so um for the holidays i'm more so it's interesting when you guys are talking about like being the kids who ruin it for everyone or or who like are, are stupid <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> my my parents actually i don't think i ever believed in santa claus but i wasn't either of those kids i feel like somehow they made it obvious to us that it was really fun and like okay to like to like have the fun of santa claus but we all knew that he wasn't real like we 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 would put cookies out and we would put milk but like we knew it was going to be mom who was eating them and i don't know how they did that like I don't remember some traumatic moment, right, where I believed it and then I didn't. It was just like somehow my earliest memories are always like we knew it was them. And so like all my gratitude was like pointed at them, but we knew it was like really fun to like pretend that there's a Santa Claus and like to pretend that there's reindeer coming on the roof, you know, and I would do that. Like I actively participated because it is really fun, (laughs) but I also knew it wasn't real. Um, So I don't know. I honestly haven't thought that much about like the possible goods or bads of like giving my kids the joy I didn't have of like totally believing in that stuff and it's still weird to me when I hear people talk about like it's weird to me that anyone ever did just because I never had that like experience (laughs) I don't think it's like crazy you know it's just hard for me to imagine um so yeah I think I want my kids to believe in like the magic of like yeah like well, I don't know how to explain it, so it's not worth saying. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't have it prepared in words. <laughs> but but she does have it prepared in dance. Cue music. Yeah. <laughs> I would be lit. I would be lit. Wait, are you two going to put up Christmas trees this year? I I'm, not, tree. I'm not at home. Well, Vince, are your parents going to put up trees? Oh, yeah, it's already up. Damn, y'all white pagan republicans um wait actually quick note on that i will say that okay so the tree's really fun right because once again it's like you're just participating in this larger story and this this thing right and it smells good but i do definitely think like building your own traditions like mm. yes all 100 percent. and i do think it'd be fun like probably as early as like seven eight nine to like have these types of conversations with them but not in a way that kills the magic in a way that like you know, low some oxygen into the coals so you, they can both, like, have the fun of participating, but also, like, fanning out, like, well, also, this isn't the whole world of what it can mean to have that Christmas magic. Like, when you understand, like, what it really is, then you you open up more spaces rather than it just always staying, like, without ever questioning it, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. What um, about you, Kevin? Yeah, I, 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 I used to be the person who said I was going to tell my kids straight up early, as early as possible. <laughs> Sit them down right out the womb. Poor Kevin's kids. Which is Listen here, Junior. <laughs> which, which is funny because I remember vividly me and my mother baking cookies for Santa Claus and my brother encouraging the whole fiasco and putting them out. And I, for, I don't remember who, but some, the first time we did it, somebody definitely went and took a bite to like convince me that Santa Claus came and like took a bite of the cookies. But I remember one year, I think one of them forgot to take a bite and I was like, but there are still presents. And I think that might've been the moment where I was like, the jig is up people. Like, (laughs) So, so let me say this. Coming from someone whose family uh, father's Puerto Rican, mother's Korean, but they encouraged the whole skit show uh, show and tell like whatever and then went i'm gonna tell my kids no easter bunny no tooth fairy no santa claus it's me and your mom fuck these like fuck these lies i then got to a place and who knows what happened when i actually have kids i got to a place where i was like no as a as an artist i can see the utility in being able to live in the fantasy world for some like your mind it's almost like 
what dreams can sometimes be like this place of bliss and this place of escapism. I can see the utility in daydreams in actual dreams when you're sleeping or you just, your mind, a part of your mind needs the ability to go to places that are fantastical, that are awe filled, that are make believe in what we call make believe. And so I think that sometimes things like tooth fairy, tooth, and it's not perfect. It's not like a end all be like it's not like a completely flawless like analogy. But ideas like the tooth fairy or Easter Bunny or Santa Claus can can serve, even if even if your kid still once your kid realizes once a adult realizes oh Santa Claus isn't real we like it's you still want to put up a tree you still want to put the wreath up you still want to like celebrate new years you still want to celebrate these like it's still fun to paint eggs it's like like like, like Leslie was saying it's still fun to just encourage these like these traditional and ceremonial ideas as an artist for me the reason is is because I, I'll use the analogy this is gonna be so weird this is such a, a, a sharp turn the, the 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 Robin Williams movie Hook Peter Pan it's the one Peter Pan movie where Peter Pan leaves Neverland and grows up. The whole point of this Peter Pan movie, Hook, is he has to become a child again. Why? Because in re the real world, he's losing his relationship and he's losing touch with his marriage and his children. So in order to, re to, to regain, to, to save and rescue his relationship with his children, he has to reintegrate what it's like to be a child to to believe in the fantastical to believe in the dreamland to know what it is to dream again to become like it to become childlike so he goes to this symbolic place of neverland re remembers what it's like to be a child like that old kooky guy in his house who's looking for his marbles go has to has to fight has to crow has to fly and the way you fly is you remember happy thoughts and the, you have to like fight like so that idea of like, you have to spend childhood learning like, like what tragedy it is if you deny the child an ability to dream in a fantastical way when they're young, but what tragedy it is, what, what, what crime it is if you don't exact of a child responsibility in this world and teaching them how to be self-sufficient. But then when you become an adult finally, there's almost this like ritualistic Phoenix like rebirth process where you have to go and re rescue your inner child from the death that you had to put it through and becoming an adult. You have to reintegrate that child, especially if you have children, because you have to put, there's this element of as an adult and as a parent, you want to participate and teach your children what it's like to dream because they're children and they should dream. And then when they become adults, they have to see what it's like to see their parent as an adult encouraging them to dream. And those are the best kind of adults. Leslie. No, no, go ahead, Prince. You were taking a print. I'll go after. I, ha I wrote down my notes so I won't forget. Um, is it universal like that these holiday symbols and like stories are like child centric? Is that even, does that have to be the case? Like, couldn't some of these things, I don't know, like there's this sense of like at a certain age, you stop believing in these. I don't, and then that it's like you stop believing in the holiday folklore almost. But does that have to be the case? I don't know. I mean, I guess it is when we're talking about like a woman that, that flies into your room and gives you money for your, your teeth. But um, I don't know, like, is there any holidays that we celebrate don't seem child centric. I don't know. I, I'm thinking of like older celebrations where even the grown people are dressed up hooting and hollering just as much as the kids. Like it's like the trick or treat is for all ages. It's not just for kids. Mm -hmm. My question would be, cause I, now I'm trying to think of holidays. My question would be name a holiday that kids don't participate in that we haven't ca that we have that capitalism hasn't turned into kid friendly. Mm -hmm. Well, Valentine's uh, Day, kind of. Kid friendly. We give out those Valentines, those um that's cards true, and candy actually, canes. Name 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 a holiday that <clears throat> capitalism hasn't made kid friendly. Labor Day. Ooh. Hol like holiday, not like you get off <laughs> work. Like, 
Like, Labor Day is, is a holiday. It's a holiday. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> holiday, holiday. Like, what do you, okay, for example, like, what way do you two celebrate Labor Day other than if your you job too. gives I'm you so all. I'm so glad that came back. The other, <laughs> other, 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 yeah. other, than your, other than maybe your jobs give you off, do you two actually do anything ritualistic or ceremonial to actually celebrate outwardly Labor Day? No, but I should, and I, I would love to. Exactly. We celebrate St. Paddy's Day. We celebrate Valentine's Day. We celebrate New Year's, Thanksgiving, thing, uh, Christmas, Halloween. But everything that we do, that we show an outward display of celebratory things, capitalism has made kid-friendly. Mm. Wow. Independ- independ- there's everything. Indep- everything. Think about it first. I mean, just, again, name a holiday we, we celebrate outwardly that we don't just take off of work that isn't kid friendly. Ooh, my mind went to a dark place. Let's see you go ahead. <laughs> where did it, where did it I, go? I, I thought of like I thought of like Midsommar and in the movie and like it, they did like a festival and there's like ritualistic killings of <laughs> human killings. So I was like that's not very child friendly, but maybe that's not where we're going with this. <laughs> okay, okay, well, but but kids didn't participate. Well, didn't they if they were being killed? Oh, they, they they weren't the ones being killed. That's true. The Aztecs have entered the chat. I don't know if that's always uh, the case. <laughs> and if you think about it, the fact that we judge past civilizations for making human sacrifice when we essentially do that on such a larger mass scale. We do our we survive on human sacrifice. We literally sacrifice the people at the bottom and crush them into the ground. Anyway, mm. okay. Period. So we're my sixty thousand a year. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Never mind. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. COVID isn't so real, you guys. <laughs> so where my mind went with it was, uh, it connects. Okay, in my mind, it connects to both what Kevin and Vincent said. Tell me if it doesn't make sense, because I think sometimes I assume that what I'm connecting is obvious and it's not. But for what both of you said, Kevin was talking about like basically the need to let children dream and the need to let them imaginate. And then Vincent was talking about uh, like, well, also Kevin was talking about like, you know, holidays that kids don't participate in because there's a capitalist, like a, a push, right? To get as many people spending as much money as possible on each other. But connecting both of those, I think that there is this false idea that of that binary of that breaking point that that it has to be that way right that you have childhood wonder and then at a certain age it's like you learn too much about reality and your like beautiful imagination gets crushed by reality and i would argue richard dawkins has this book called the magic of reality and i don't think i even ever finished it but the title always stuck with me and his whole thesis was like you don't need to believe in whatever it be whether it be a religion whether it be like a superstition um, you know, a, a, a ceremony, a tradition. You don't have to believe in these signifiers. Like, actually, when you engage with reality, you realize, like, the magic is real. So that's kind of what I think I was trying to say earlier, where I think it makes sense to... Magic is real. And and I think it's crazy that we think it's breaking... I think it breaks kids' sense of wonderment when we feed them the way of teaching about reality that we do, which tends to be much more surface level and much more related to ulterior interests. So like in the education system, like passing a test, like in parenting, maybe like making sure that you're behaved in public as opposed to like, um, if you, I know I always come back to this lately, but it's like, seriously, if I recently started learning about mycelium which is what gives birth to like mushrooms. And there's like an underground network that if you go into any forest, like the mycelium is shout out to, yeah, like my episode of Cosmos that I was like plugging like crazy a couple of weeks ago was like what first exposed me to this. And I have a lot more reading I want to do, but it's essentially like mycelium truly does like connect like everything in the forest. So like when you walk into a forest, like it's not just like hippy dippy shit. Like it's actually truly happening. Like, in reality and so the idea that we can't that we have to lose our sense of wonderment as as we grow up i think is annoying and then i think it's also annoying that it's like why don't we teach kids that stuff 
earlier. So I guess connecting back to the idea of like, would it kill a kid's sense of imagination to know that like Santa Claus isn't real? I mean, I still don't know. I don't know how much benefit there is there because I didn't get to experience it, but I don't think it has to at all. Like, I think that like them being able to participate in the fun, but also knowing it's not real, but also like learning about all the stuff around us from every lens that is so much cooler and so much more imaginative and so much more room for exploration and actual like stones in the water, right? That you can step upon rather than one limited idea of Santa Claus that just kind of is fun and full of wonder, but doesn't have anywhere you can go with it. Like, you know, on Christmas Eve, maybe my tradition will be like breaking open a biology book and we learn like one new element of like just a single cell. Leslie's poor kids. Oh God. (laughs) Poor Leslie's kids. And, Merry and, Christmas. Here's a pop quiz. And, and get out your number two quiz. pencil. <laughs> but even them knowing, like, I don't know, like, you know, like holding your kid's hand and being like, hey, did you know, like, we're actually technically not touching because, like, what is it? Repel each other? Atoms repel each other? Like, that's cool as shit. Like, that's so, and the, the applications are, like, so real. So that's my, th- so anyway, all that to say, I feel like adults and children, why can't uh, children be more adult-like from the beginning and not in all the negative connotations, but in the potential beauty for adulthood, which is you can carry your childhood wonder for, but also you have more mental faculty to engage more and more and more with like, I think the root of what we all like so much about kids, which really just cause, does come back to like an ability, a capacity for wonder and imagination, which in conclusion, sorry, this is so long, but like so many of the most brilliant minds that have pushed like humanity forward something i've been thinking about lately is like we think of like geniuses as like so rare right like but if you actually study like history or just look around us today like they're not that rare like really maybe not genius but like really above average brilliant people who like who like push humanity forward even if we never learn their name like they have like these essential contributions to like the collective knowledge and like tools And so many of those people did, in a sense, you could say, like, acted like kids in that they dreamed things before they knew that they were real, and then they proved them. Like, so many of the big discoveries weren't like, oh, they gathered, gathered, gathered evidence. Like, yes, obviously, they were learning, and they have a certain amount of subject matter knowledge, but a lot of them, like, made sudden leaps, like, imagine something or literally have had dreams and then like wake up and like write down their theories and so the separation between like you either have imagination or you know what's real like you know the real deal i think is like a false separation that doesn't have to be there at all so you're saying are are you saying encourage more of the know what's real or are you saying both and I'm saying by encouraging knowing what's real you do encourage more imagination and by encouraging more imagination you know more of what's real. Like a lot of our big knowing of what's real has come directly as a result of people like just bouncing totally out of the box of what should have made sense and being like, I think this is the thing. And then like retroactively, like finding the evidence to support it. And I wish I had a good example, but I don't want to look ignorant. So I don't want to name something that actually isn't that. So so, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to figure out a way to ask this. Um, There's a little circle, adult child. So but she's my, currently my, showing us if you're not watching YouTube <laughs> her her uh, her note <laughs> where this is based out of. It's just the word adult and an arrow and the word child and an arrow and there a circle. <laughs> um cuz like the cuz 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 and this may not have been what you're saying and I may have got lost in 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 the rhetoric so I want to clarify. Cuz as as you were saying what you were saying it sounded like which I don't think it could have been what you were doing. I don't think it is. It sounded like an argument against the idea of encouraging bewilderment in things like Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, Easter Bunny. Um, It it wasn't an argument against that. It was an argument against the idea that that's the only option for like, well, if you just are one of those parents who tell them it's not real, it's either like, you know, let them be kids, let them have imagination, tell them these things. Like these are the established safe ways for kids Mm. to like be full of wonder or you can just kind of not as opposed to like you can engage them with reality just like do it in in ways that don't serve specific ends that do tend to tie into capitalism or tend to tie into like classism no, that's real that's real so yeah. what i was because then what i was going to say was 
and that's that's uh, so what i was saying was for was focusing more on the childlike side but that's why i use the peter pan analogy right i was saying that a child especially when they're for me for as an artist and what was important for me what i believe my personal philosophy a child has to be not only permitted and given the license to but encouraged to dream but the the beautiful thing about that hook movie is he had to become an adult right like you had to like reckon with like leslie all the things you were saying reality and the beautiful things the the awe filled the wonder filled things you can encounter in adulthood in within real within measurable realities of of that that exist outside of fantasy um and then what I was saying was the idea of, and for me, the reason I say this is because as an artist, what my common experience was, was the idea of adults who lost touch with their child, with their, with their inner child, would then try to stifle my inner child and any access to the idea of fantasy and thereby negate that realm. And so what I was trying to encourage was the idea of, hey, the reason, I, the reason I'm going to encourage the idea of Santa Claus Easter Bunny tooth fair with my children is because becoming an adult is going to be a not is going to be a non-negotiable you want to have a job you want to have a job you want to like become you want to become like self-sufficient in this world you're going to have at some level you're going to have to be able to sustain personal responsibility and self-accountability unless you just want to be homeless and jobless so that's going to be a non-negotiable but what isn't a non-negotiable is you're holding on to an ability to dream and to fantasize. You can let go of that. Many adults let go of that. Factory workers, like people let go of that. People let go of the ability to fantasize and dream. So I was more so just encouraging the idea of as an artist from the perspective of an artist, I understand how important it is to, like we do it with like, it's, it's the same. Oh, I 100% like, like, agree. Yeah, I'm also so not that, anti so, just fantasy that has, but I'm just saying there's a weird dichotomy that doesn't, like there's a weird separation that doesn't exist. Like they're both yeah, so, rich, you know, and they also ultimately, I think, turn into the same thing. Art is life, life is art. Like For sure. So I don't want to negate the idea yeah. that you can find fantastical, wonderful, wistful things within reality. Um, and I, I don't think you were negating the idea, the utility and the validity of wistful, wonderful, and beautiful things within fantasy and holding on to that even within to reality. And those two, two things, those two things can be like pedals on a bike, right? Like you have one pedal and it's like, you're kind of fucked in the water. You're one paddle in the water going in a circle. Like you need both paddles. Um, so I was just trying to clarify that mm. point. But, um, and for me, I was just trying to read as an artist, my personal experience has been the messaging has been, Hey, like if, if anything else you can do without the fantasy, you can't do without the reality and the things that we all kind of agree on, which is like measurable, touchable, tangible things, but you can do without this whole like Disneyland, Elsa, Frozen, let it go, horse shit and, and Santa Claus and Easter bunny and whatever. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to re I just wanted to, I wanted to make that clarifying point with you and see exactly within the nuance, what, what you were, what you were concentrating it down to and, and make sure that we're both maybe not negating the other point i wasn't negating the idea the, the utility and the beauty of reality and you weren't negating the utility and the beauty of fantasy so i have a question <laughs> um I, I okay honest i am stealing this from reddit but i was inspired by this reddit thread okay. um on the note of just holidays and celebrations also i just hit my funny bone and i'm trying to not react <laughs> but that hurts so bad um okay basically the whole thread was like trying to describe our holiday celebrations almost to like an alien that has no context and how absurd some of them sound um so an example that i'm stealing was them trying to describe Easter where they said like once a year, many Christian adults will hide plastic eggs around their dwellings for their younglings to find. It's taught that a large upright rabbit is responsible. And this is all done in celebration of Jesus dying and then odd and then undying. So accurate, so absurd. So I was wondering if you guys would be able to pick up a holiday and then describe it in its full absurdity as if like to an, an alien species. I like that. Should we each pick a different holiday? Yeah. yeah. I'll go last. Me? me? Okay. So then, my, so, for, so, for Valent so, so for Valentine's Day, the way I would describe it to aliens who didn't know is it's characterized by the colors red and pink. 
characterized by gifts of chocolate and roses. Valentine's Day is a day that is said to be about love, but is more about the emotion of excitement, infatuation, and romance. Basically feelings that are all fleeting and shallow, but it is one of the most important days of the year, but it is most, but it is the most important day, but it is the most, is one of the most important days of the year for, a, for one person to exhibit to another their supposed, quotation, love in the form of external g- acts of gifts, services, and acts of grandeur and quality time. Ta-da! Wow. We love a we love a, a social critical poet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why we let I didn't want Kevin to go first because I, I don't want to go after that. I got as far as I got was this holiday is us celebrating a dead saint by poisoning our livers and <laughs> honoring a dead saint who apparently may have fought a mythical beast by poisoning our livers. <laughs> that's that's Saint Patty's Day. <laughs> nothing about clovers <laughs> nothing about the color green nothing I, about I was i was leprechaun. i was getting to the pinch thing um but i couldn't i couldn't really crystallize something good we poison oh, our livers and physically assault each other in honor of the dead saint if we're not wearing the color green yeah. get pinched i forgot about the pinch um, what is it what is a clover even what do you mean? What is a clover? It's a plant. Is Have it, you never seen a clover? Is it out really? Wild? Yeah, I, it is. I haven't. I really haven't. Really? Uh, maybe I have. I don't know. I don't think so. You probably have. They're out in like fields of grass. Little four leaf. Little. Usually there are three leaves though, which is why finding a four leaf is so lucky. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. As far as I got was on this planet, one of the defining factors by which people group and divide themselves, that's as far as I wrote, but I'll just try to finish it, is by their beliefs in access to higher powers and what happens after their deaths. And Christmas is a time when the most prominent grouping of these people have co-opted a previously existing tradition that involves wrapping presents in square boxes and shiny paper and exchanging them or more often in modern times writing numbers on pieces of paper that often cancel each other out (laughs) and exchanging them Uh, and eating a lot of really, really sweet sugary food. And everyone celebrates it, but the one primary group places the narrative upon the celebration that it's about the birth of their deity. Mm. He said social commentary. Got it. Okay, podcast idea. We may need to cut this because someone will steal it, and I want my 10%. The whole premise of the podcast is every episode, we describe something that we don't name until the end as if we're describing it to an alien species. And the whole point is that you're trying to make it sound as weird, but still as factual as possible. Tell me that's not a hit. That's a hit. Oh, I mean, we it. could do that as an episode. I mean, obviously, we can't just launch a whole other podcast, but we could do that as an episode. We could even do it where not even it's just like one topic that you're trying to describe to an alien species, but every <laughs> every idea that we normally would have had and exchanged, we try to like put into that mode. Season two tune in so thank you guys for listening especially if you stayed to this point in the podcast if you would be so obliged we would ask that you'd please subscribe to us on youtube and instagram and twitter that is the bottomless podcast spelled b-t-t-m-l-e-s-s podcast 
And again, for any first time listeners, my God, thank you for sticking around this long. For all of our return listeners who are like family who just stayed this long, thank you as well. We enjoyed your presence and your company, and we will see you guys next episode. Bottomless. Peace. <laughs>